Hey, this is Robbie with Robbie's Reptiles. Today we're going to be talking about the Cappuccino Crested Gecko. So in this import, I was able to get a hold of four crested geckos, three of which are cappuccino, one of which is a super cappuccino, and my favorite part, all of which have absolutely no Dalmatian spots. They don't have a missing tail that might possibly have a Dalmatian spot, nor does any of their lineage have Dalmatian spots. That was my biggest gripe with getting into this gene. In my opinion, when you're breeding such high-end geckos, you need to keep the Dalmatian gene out of patterned animals. I understand super Dalmatians and all of that. Uh, when it's a super Dalmatian or super ink spot on a patternless gecko, that looks beautiful and it's respectable in its own right. It's a very impressive looking animal. However, when you start pairing Dalmatians or super Dals into say Lily Whites or Cappuccinos or Frappuccinos, you end up getting something that is truly undesirable and will end up being worthless to most crested gecko breeders. So that was my biggest concern about even considering getting into Cappuccinos was how on earth am I gonna be able to find ones without Dalmatian spots? Well, after about four and a half months of searching and contacting about 40 different breeders, I was able to find only these four that are spotless. Well, I'm sure that there are others and I have seen them, they are definitely not for sale. So that's why it was such a struggle to be able to find ones that were even for sale in the first place. Cappuccino is an incomplete dominant gene. And what that means is that when you pair it to another gecko, say, a normal, which doesn't necessarily exist, but let's say any gecko that you pair a cappuccino to, half of the babies will come out cappuccino. So that's really awesome in terms of genetic discovery as well as turning a profit if you are looking at it from the business side. But what's even cooler about genes that are incomplete or co-dominant, when you pair two cappuccinos together, you get a super form. Now the super form of this is a super cappuccino, which is one of the most striking phenotypes I have ever seen in any animal. It ends up being a dark purple translucent. Their eyes are pitch black. Now this does end up fading away with age we've found. However, the super cappuccinos do not seem to have any sort of health defects whatsoever. And the one that I have is probably one of the most active and inquisitive hatchlings that I've ever dealt with. So first off, I was able to get this pinstripe spotless cappuccino male. He is around 13 grams right now, but they're already eating bugs like crazy and they've been here for two days. I was able to get this female, also spotless, dashed pinstripe cappuccino, and she's sitting around 20 grams right now. Then I was also able to get a hatchling cappuccino that is also spotless and a super cappuccino that is spotless. Uh, one thing that I am disappointed in, although I knew this going into it, was their poor head structure. Luckily, the male's head structure actually is at least flat. However, the female's head structure points straight up. The Crested Gecko hobby as a whole is going to have to work towards improving the head structure in all cappuccinos. Most of them do not have the best head structure, and I don't think that that's like it comes with the gene. I just think that was the selection of geckos that were, you know, that originated this gene, didn't have the best head structure, so we need to improve upon it as best we can. When it comes to identifying a cappuccino, the water gets a little bit muddy because oftentimes it might even look like a $50 Crested Gecko you could find at Petco. And there are breeders actually that are trying to buy geckos that are at Petco. If they have some sort of pinstriping that looks funky, they post it as a possible cappuccino for $2,000 in America, and there's a bit of scams going on right now. So you need to be wary when you're purchasing this. It can get a little complicated because it looks so, it looks so much like a normal Crested Gecko, but there are a couple of things that you can look out for. So first things first, fresh out of the egg, a cappuccino will have a pure white base of the tail and there will usually be a V, a very prominent V at the base of the tail. Uh, also, once they start aging, their pinstriping will start to leak a little bit, it looks like. And that's just something that I've noticed. It's a bit of a unique dashed pinstripe look. And then besides that, it's a very unique hue of brown. A surefire way of knowing that it's a cappuccino, of course, is to know that it has Korean lineage and to just directly buy it from a Korean or someone that is actually working with cappuccinos. Now there are patternless cappuccinos that have been hatched out and usually you can just identify it by having a very bright white base of the tail, although that still might not even be a surefire method of identification. And of course the super cappuccino is very easy to identify. I don't think anyone's gonna have trouble identifying that. So what's so important about this cappuccino? While of course everyone that has bought into these cappuccinos, there's a financial incentive. We're trying to run a business and this is the new biggest thing. But now we've gotten a good handful of genetics to start working with in the Crested Gecko hobby. You know, we have Frappuccinos, Supercap, Ciroc, 
we don't have super soft cappuccino. We don't have a lot of extreme Harlequin Halloween cappuccinos. We don't have a lot of phantom cappuccinos or patternless cappuccinos. We don't have any head exantha cappuccinos or visual exantha cappuccinos, let alone head exanthic fraps or visual exanthic fraps or head exanthic sorox or head exanthic supers or visual exanthic supers or visual exanthic sorox. All of that, the giant list that I just listed off, those aren't even the new genes that are coming out, such as Sable, Chocho, things that the, the community isn't even like aware of at this point. There's so many new genes that will be coming up within the next few years. Having a cappuccino is going to be so incredible to outcross immediately to any new potential gene. Because now it isn't just gonna be, oh look, I made a cappuccino. Because if we did that within the next two years, cappuccinos are only gonna be like $1,000. Look what happened to Lily White's. What's really important is that now we have, let's say five genetics total. Now the new, the new future is going to be genetic stacking to get those frappuccinos head exanthic to get those sable caps that are het exanthic or visual exanthic, to get those Ciroc's that are het exanthic, to get cappuccino extreme harlequins, super caps that are super dal, super cap lily whites, cappuccino um, Halloweens, cappuccino pinstripe, cappuccino phantom, cappuccino visual exanthic, cappuccino head exanthic. It goes on and on. The first example of this genetic stack would be a frappuccino. Frappuccino is when you cross a cappuccino to a lily white, I believe 25% of the offspring will end up being a Frappuccino. So let's say that you hatch out a Frappuccino and a Lily White. How do you tell them apart? Usually the Frappuccino will have a more unique brown hue to the head, but you can always tell by the bright white tail. Most Lily Whites when they're born have a bit of yellow or orange maybe. Well, with a Frappuccino, it is pure white out of the egg. And adult Frappuccinos are a league of their own. It's probably one of the most striking phenotypes I have ever seen. Being able to have that cappuccino with those unique hues of brown and then the lily white gene, it seems the cappuccino almost like makes the lily white patterning, the actual white markings, frothy almost and very uh, cloudy. And they, they just, they're so creamy looking. I don't know how to describe it. Recently, as of the making of this video, RCK and someone named Moon Geckos actually have hatched out some of the very first super cappuccino lily whites. They ended up naming it Sorak, which is after a mountain in the in Korea somewhere. That's what they said in the post. Resembling marble, it's a very striking and beautiful looking gecko with that translucent purple uh, overall base color. And then the lily white gene really just starts like popping up almost like it's bleeding through that. It's really interesting and hard to describe. So what are going to be some of my plans with these cappuccinos? Well, not only will I eventually make super cappuccinos, although not this first season, I'm gonna be primarily focusing on creating head exanthic cappuccinos with this beautiful female. And then when this male is ready in probably 2023, I'm going to be pairing him to my super softs, to my tangerine lily whites. I'll be pairing him to possibly nose candy, we will see. But everyone and their brother is gonna be trying to make super cappuccinos. Everyone's gonna bum rush that. So I figured that that is my opening to you know, be a niche within a niche, such as pairing him to my super soft female, then all of the babies will end up being a soft scale cappuccino. Raise those up, pair them together, you end up getting super soft cappuccinos as well as super soft super cappuccinos possibly. So that would be a really exciting project to work with. I wanna see how it interacts with the tangerine gene, if it really will brighten up those colors, and especially with my tangerine lily whites that I got from Steve, I wonder how it would affect the cappuccino and frappuccino look. I'm really excited for that tangerine lily pairing. Uh, and other than that, I'll be pairing him to Thalia and Nikki, of course, next season, as well as to my soft scale lily whites and my best lily whites that I have. The frappuccinos, the super softs, hopefully, unless there's a dow spot hiding that I really can't see, any cappuccino variant or any cappuccino outcross that I'll be making within the next few years, they will all be completely spotless. So that's why I got them. I'm super excited about them. But anyway, that's gonna be doing it for today's video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and all that YouTube mumbo jumbo, and I'll see you guys in the next video.